Tonight we're going to talk about Comic-Con. So uh, let me get this little thing that I'm supposed to do done here. Uh, this is the All Things Nerd Podcast, Season 4, Episode 29. On tonight's cast, it's just Comic-Con at home. Everybody's invited. Everybody gets to go. We're going to talk about the schedule, where you can watch, and how they're making this an event to remember for 2020. That and a... Well, that's that's pretty much it. There's not a lot much more because we're not doing nerd news or anything. So uh, sit back and enjoy the show. Here's the intro. Hello to all the geek enthusiasts and nerd aficionados. This is Mess5150 welcoming you to another All Things Nerd podcast. This is Season 4, Episode 29. I am your host, Mess5150, and today we're talking about Comic-Con. Comic-Con at home. There's a lot of panels. You can watch everything from home. Um, we'll talk about where to watch it and stuff. This podcast is brought to you by Malice-Corp.com. We record this live every Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 p.m. Eastern, on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Malice Corp. And uh, we thank you for coming and joining us and being a part of the show. Your insights are very welcome, and we do inter- we do have an interactive chat with the people that are here live. So thank you guys for joining us. Um, you have me on the show, Mess5150, also joining us on the cast. We have my all-the-time co-host, or sometimes host when I'm not here, Mr. Masonic Vader. How are you, sir? I'm good, sir. I've got my uh, badge checked. I got my sleeping bag. We're busy in Hall Line, line Hall H, and I got my swag bag ready to go, <laughs> and uh, I got my tube. So let, let's grab some artwork. Let's go. We're going to Comic Con, right? Oh yeah. I got yeah. my backpack. Let's go. You can do all that stuff still. They're 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 doing it. So um, there's yeah. a line outside my apartment. Let's go. <laughs> I believe it. You are in San Diego. Um, <laughs> also joining us on the cast, we have Super Whovian Freak. How are you? I, I, I'm, I'm tired. I'm a little tired. I had my test this morning, and but otherwise, I'm all good. I, I do feel like I had a brain drill, though. They do that in the, line hall, line, the, the H, hall, H line now? They do that? They do that, yeah. I had to get, you know, I had to make sure that I was safe to interact with everyone, you know, before going in and, and sleeping on the grassy hills, you know? So, Super and I work together, and um, my wife tested positive for COVID a, a few weeks back. So, I had to go get tested, um, which I came back negative. Yay! But Yay. Uh, we work together. So, because we work together, she had to go get tested just to be safe um, because I haven't gotten well, results also- yet. You know, I, I, I live in an apartment with three people and we had someone that was exposed and also in the apartment helping unload some stuff to go to a gardening plot. So it's like I got double I got double teamed in the wrong way. So, <laughs> oh. um, <laughs> you know, double teamed in the wrong way could be taken a lot of different ways. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, um, but yeah, so we both had to get the scrape in the nose, and, and it's, you know, I never thought I would be referencing tw- uh, Total Recall in 2020, but yeah, the whole ripping the thing out of his nose, that's that's your that's yes. your COVID test right there. <laughs> I mean, I thought the first reference to Total Recall would be somebody actually getting a third breast implanted onto their chest. Um, that, that's just the way of the world. But lastly, we have a third a third person that's joining us as a cast member to talk, and that is Nudie Rudy talking about third breasts. Here's a nude man. He's wearing a shirt, though. <laughs> What's up, sir? Please don't show us any of your breasts, all right? That's Keep the wrong feet podcast feet. for that. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a, a Malice Corp at night where I can really mm. let everything loose. What do you guys think? No, you know? no. No. Wait, wait. By the, by the look of your shirt, you were practicing your hand washing technique. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. Just wash everything up good. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, God. This is going to be a great show. I can tell it already. Uh, and welcome, Beacon, to the chat room as well. Um, yeah, it's going to be a great show. We did get a question, and Johnny bon- bon Johnny's in there as well. Thank you, and welcome to the cast. Um, we did get a question. Are tickets still available for Comic Con? Yes. Because everybody's welcome. You can actually see everything from home. Um, they're, they're, they're doing it up big this year. So let's get right into it. I got no intro for anything. Um, it's just Comic-Con schedule. So here, here we go. Uh, Comic-Con the... at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, so two things. Uh, where can you participate in Comic-Con? YouTube. 
if you go look up Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, Comic Con International, um, they are going to be presenting all these panels on YouTube. They're also, from what I read, I remember, I'm pretty sure, going to have the panels here on Twitch. So um, two places. <laughs> they are partnered with YouTube, um, with Amazon, but there's an Amazon Virtual Con going on, and I think it's different panels. So you may want to look up Amazon Virtual Con to see what they've got going on for that. F th that stuff we're going to touch on at the end of the show. There's a lot of different things that are doing um, their own little conventions and stuff like that as well. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about all these different panels that are going on at Comic Con. Um, I'm going to bring up the big panels. We're going to talk about those hidden gems and those surprises. Um, Wednesday, pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple. Generally at Comic-Con, there's not um, a lot of panels. This year, because there's no actual Comic-Con, they do have panels. And all the panels, if you are one with a child or one that uh, is in the field of teaching, Wednesday is a great, great day for Comic-Con because everything is really classroom uh, centric on it. It's focused on teaching with comic books and um, a lot of things in that factor. So I was going to kind of breeze over Wednesday because that's really the whole focus is just that teaching aspect. And I, I thought that was really, really cool. Masonic Vader here is a sub is a sub teacher and our other cohort in crime that pops in every once in a while, every two years or so, Beacon is a teacher. So um, Wednesday seems like a really, really cool aspect for that. What do you think? Yeah, there was a there was a cool uh, a couple of them I saw in there that were at three o'clock. I, I might check out. One's called Geek Ed, which mm -hmm. was kind of cool. It's kind of showing the what? how you could use the whole geek uh, idea and putting it into the the world of teaching. And then at the same time, some of the figure it out. They were putting on my phone or my computer. Or something. There was teaching and learning uh, and learning with comics, which is cool. So mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not like it's not like they're not doing it already. If you read a comic book, if you if you watch any type of story arc, there's always some type of education going on there. But now they're they're uh, you know doing it in a way that I could, if I were in a classroom, I'd be able to do it. Other than putting the Avengers up on the wall and say, "Hey, there's the Avengers." <laughs> well, nothing ever made me so angry in school. Going back to my high school, where it was like people were reading comic books or people were reading you know uh, graphic novels and things like that, and teachers would tell them like. I'm sorry, no, you have to put that away. That's not real books. Like, you're not going to learn anything from that. And it's like, I'm sorry. Uh, well, let me pick up my copy of Moby Dick then and, you know, read that. Because while that's considered classic literature, it's like, yes, you can still gain education from a comic book. You can still gain education and morals and things like that from fantasy books. Um, uh, Dritz de Worden, the, you know, the Neverwinter Nights trilogies and, and the uh, Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and blah, blah, blah. You can still learn things from these books. I, I never understood this, this <sighs> adherence to canon literature. While some of canon books are, are fantastic, you're going to alienate kids today, especially by, by making them read these old boring books that these old boring people picked out in school. You know, you're not gonna necessarily relate to them. So this is excellent in that regard. Um, um, getting people engaged. Yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> Beacon, I encourage graphic novels. They are the gateway drug to books. Exactly. So <laughs> if you can get them hooked in there, then they're gonna start picking up other things and they're gonna start reading. I mean, what got me hooked was, was Nancy Drew as, as a child. I, I started, my, my grandma had passed down some first edition Nancy Drews throughout our family. And so, you know, when, when I, I don't know, came of age, I guess, or hit 10, uh, my sister passed me down these Nancy Drew books and they were fantastic, but they weren't picture books, you know. Um, but that's what got me hooked. And then I started reading other things throughout, you know, and I, I started getting hooked on mysteries from an early age. Um, but don't alienate kids from reading just because we as adults think that eh, it's juvenile. Yeah, Ugh. no, absolutely. Hell, us adults are juvenile. Moving on. I also <laughs> want to wel wel welcome wel Kat Sadal. Thank you so much for the subscription uh, for this this uh, this month. And thank you to anybody that subscribes to the channel. You guys really help and support us and help us uh, keep this going and hopefully get better things like little effects popping up on the Twitch stream. Um, I have better I can... lighting. Yeah, exactly. So let's get into this. Uh, so the big panel, starting off with Thursday. Thursdays, starting at 10 o'clock, you have N Nudie Rudy going to be excited and going to be 
probably watching early, the Star Trek Universe Virtual Panel. So this is the big Star Trek panel that they have every year. Um, they're going to have the Star, the Star Trek Discovery cast do a virtual table read of the Season 2 finale. Sounds kind of cool. Um, you're going to have Mike Mahan from Rick and Morty and Solar Opposites, the creator, showrunner, and executive producer of the upcoming animated comedy series Star Trek Lower Decks, which actually comes out August 6th. So we saw we heard a little bit about what Lower Decks was last year, which is a... Um, a little raunchier cartoon for Star Trek, basically. It deals with all the people kind of that... Like Star Trek Futurama. Yeah, well, it's it deals with all the people that work at on the lower decks of the Enterprise and how they're... Sure. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, you have Patrick Stewart and the lively cast of the series Picard coming together virtually for a post-finale to discuss the critically acclaimed first season. Yeah, so, uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, 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 go name. ahead, Nudie, Nudie, you're the, you're the Star Trek aficionado. Let's hear it. I'm uh, excited for both. Uh, love Picard. Uh, haven't caught the whole series yet, but definitely working on it. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, I know, I know. I'm behind so much stuff out there. There is way too much. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it really sounds fun. I'm looking forward to that uh, Below Decks. It looks fun, too. Uh, interesting perspective take on, you know, the, the red shirts and other characters you never get to spend time with <laughs> yeah all the lost souls <laughs> yeah. i always oh, like look i always like looking seeing like my dad was a star trek fan he was a huge trek fan and uh i i like the movies i like more than next generation movies but it, it's always yeah. fun watching a lot of these guys coming back in and talking because to be honest with you they're they're, they're the main reason why sci-fi is still continuing because there was that big gap of star wars after Return of the Jedi, that it just you know, in a way, Star Trek carried the carried the, the sci-fi lore torch until uh, things were right. You know, them and Doctor adjusted. Who, yeah, 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 exactly. Um, I'm I'm excited for it. And they, there's the other panel too. If you missed it, they had the um, Star Trek. What was it called? I put it in the chat. Um, all the Starfleet ladies then and now. So yeah. Did you get, read? Did you read the description of it? Did you read the yeah, description I did. of it? Yeah, it, and it sounds really cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, cool. So they're going to bring all like the main Starfleet actresses on? No, no. It's I just, like it because it's just the people heard... that wrote about those characters and, and yeah. how they <laughs> adapted their exactly. characters in the book. <laughs> but, I mean, no offense to the big guys of Star Trek, but we've heard, you know, Takai. We've heard William Shatner. We've heard Picard, you know, and all of them. We know their stories. We've seen them all. So this is cool to see yeah, all but of I want to other... see a panel with the... You know the actress that played Janeway and and yes. her uh, and uh, although she's she's not doing very well, um and oh, all God. the all you know all those people on a panel. I don't want to hear the the art the authors talk about how they figured out how to write that character from the TV show into a book. Give yeah. me the people that, that played that character and they can talk about how they they made women a forefront on the Star Trek universe. I I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, sorry, tangent. Quit no, brother. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> moving on to the um, the next uh, big one. I don't know if any of you guys watch this. I'm just going through the big panels really quick. Amazon Prime Truth Seekers, a new original supernatural horror comedy by Simon Pegg and Nick Frost. And they're going to discuss the making of the hilarious eight episode series about a team of part time paranormal investigators who team up to uncover and film ghost sighting across the U.S. the U.K., sharing their adventures on an online channel for all to see. There's a discussion and a Q&A moderated by Empire Magazine's Chris Hewitt. Um, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, guys. I mean, it sounds like a mashup of Scooby Doo meets Shaun of the Dead meets Supernatural, and I'm all for it. I mean, those are like three of my favorite things ever. So I'm good. I'll be there. The funny thing is, when I read that, the first thing that came to my mind was, hey, let's make a show about the Ghostbusters before they came, became the Ghostbusters. So <laughs> when they were all scientists doing their thing right yeah. there, I was like, oh, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah. I think it's funny that you went Ghostbusters. I went Scooby Doo. Uh, there you go. That's a generation <laughs> like, thing, I guess. Generation or what we grew up on, I guess. Yeah, because um, I didn't hit Ghostbusters. I don't think I was introduced to Ghostbusters till I was like maybe thirteen, fourteen. Like I knew of it, but I don't think I actually got to watch it till I was like thirteen, fourteen. But Scooby Doo was every every day in my house. Scooby Doo, Raffy, Scooby Doo, Raffy. That was my jam in the eighties. No judge. <laughs> has <laughs> it, yeah so i'm i'm i love simon Pegg and nick frost anytime they're partnered up yeah. so um that 
yeah, I'm all all in on that one. That that I'm excited for that. And Amazon's done good with the shows that they've brought to uh, to the air so far. So um, mm-hmm. all their their original Prime shows. So um, anybody watch Duncanville? Cartoon no, on Fox. Is that? Cartoon on I've Fox. Never heard of it. It's going to have uh, your producer and star Amy Poehler, Ty Burrell, Ricky Lindholm, Joy Osmonsky, Yazir Lester, Betsy Sadaro, Rashida oh, wow. Jones, and Wiz Khalifa on the panel. And I mean, that's talk a about the second great season. cast. You, you hooked me with Ty Burrell immediately. Um, but I've never even heard of it. Like, how have I not heard of this? It was a new, Fo- it was a new Fox cartoon, and those, those yeah. come up a lot. They just pop up out of the blue. Oh, Fox. That's why. Yeah. Oh, Fox. Nobody gives a fox. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> All right, let's move on to a big one. Um, this is the first Disney Plus panel that I've seen at Comic Con. Uh, look inside Marvel Six One Six. It's going to explore how Marvel's rich legacy of stories, characters, and creators exist within the, within the world outside your window. It's a documentary style. It's helmed uh, by unique filmmaker exploring the intersections of storytelling pop culture and fandom within the Mar- marvel universe you're going to get uh jillian jacobs is one of the directors paul Shear is a director on it uh executive producers sarah amos and jason sturman and they're going to discuss the making of this new anthology series um but yeah it's from what i from what i remember or what i've been seeing it's like a focus on each character within the main marvel universe which is the 616 and delving a little bit deeper into their history and and who they were and what created them and stuff like that i I, a marvel documentary series for disney guys okay no i i i I, you know what there's a i i think there's a point in marvel right now where i think everyone wants to find out what's going to happen next not what's happened already and kind of learn about it don't get me wrong it looks interesting but I've gotten to a point where I want to see what's going to happen in the future with the Marvel universe and what they're going to do there versus, you know, how they're, they're storyboarding and storytelling and, and stuff like that. I, I, I mean, it's, it's sad to say that, but that's kind of like where I'm at right now. <laughs> they're trying, sorry. Um, the, they're talking in the chat room about Duncanville and HJZ Grok says Duncanville's on after Bob's burgers. Me thinks. But Beacon says Bob's Burgers is on after Bob's Burgers. That's the way he watches. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but no, nobody else is interested in the uh, the the deep dive into Marvel characters. I mean, I'll probably watch it. I never got to read the comics growing up, so it could be fun for me. What about? The next big one is Am- Amazon came really big this year with with panels for the, they di- really did. the virtual one. Uh, Utopia, a twisted eight episode thriller about a group of young comic fans who discover the conspiracy in a graphic novel is real and embark on a high stakes adventure to save humanity from the end of the world. You've got I mean... writer and executive producer Gillian Flynn, who, do- who did Gone Girl. But then you've got John Cusack, Rain Wilson, uh, Sasha mm-hmm. Lane, Ashley Lathrop, Dan Be- Beard. Desmond Borge, Javon Juana Walton, and Jessica Roth. And there's going to be a Q&A. Sounds interesting. I, I, I overlooked that one. I, I might have to check that out. I love John Cusack. I have a man crush on I him. I do. Now. I do. I like John Cusack. <laughs> I, I do like Rain Wilson, too. Um, everyone else. Oh, I like Dan Beard from Cougar Town. Um, but uh, everyone else, I, I don't think I've seen them in anything. Uh, but... It, it sounds interesting. It sounds like a really well-written fan fiction brought to life. We have the His Dark Materials panel, which is for the second season of the HBO series with cast. I can't wait for that one. That which one I'm, was that? I'll be there. His Dark Materials, talking yeah. for a second season. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't get to see the first season, but it sounds interesting. You haven't seen the first season? It's on HBO, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so you kind of have to Okay, pay, pay okay. Pay. fair enough, fair enough. I'll give you that, because I, I watched it on uh, my HBO Hulu add-on. Um, and there's going to be no shaming me for not seeing it, because I'm not going to binge watch <laughs> something again. Damn it, not that hey, quick. It's only like nine episodes, so at least this binge watch is going to be kind of small. <laughs> okay, so here's, here's one, and I want to get your thoughts on this, because this is one that has been pushed back and back and back and back and then forward and then back. 
uh, they just announced this panel. They really, really want to push this to get people back excited about it. The New Mutants is having a panel um, with the cast. And to yeah, to Broke that down. <laughs> no, Thursday at 6 59 p.m. No, yeah, 2 p.m. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, what do you guys think? Do you think it's it's all for naught, or do you think it's still going to be a good movie and this is just really to ignite the fire? I, I would like to see <laughs> just to see if the if the how, how much the actors have aged since they started filming. <laughs> I know. The I mean, for new mutants. <laughs> Maisie Williams might have gotten older, but she definitely didn't get any taller. We'll just call them the mutants because they're definitely not new anymore. No. <laughs> I hope it's good. I mean, it would really, it would really suck if they put all this effort into fixing it and reshooting and whatever else they've done for it to come out and still bomb. This, this is in the Marvel MCU, right? No. Or is this Sony MCU? This was Fox. Oh, is this, this was Fox? The Fox, the Fox uh, X Men universe. It's gonna suck. Sorry. <laughs> I thought they were um, holding out because it was one of the things that they, that but, Marvel took it over and but, was trying to salvage it. No, apparently it was it was a lot more lighthearted than the trailer. the 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 director that I did it that. wanted it to be dark, but the Fox studio wanted it to be more lighthearted, like the other X Men films. And so the trailer they put out was a darker looking trailer. And the fans liked that, so they let them do reshoots to get back to the more darker side. But then it kept getting pushed back, and then COVID happened, and then it got pushed back, and then it got brought forward. Uh, I heard a rumor today that after they do this panel, a week later, it, uh, they're announcing at the panel that a week later it's going to be going to video on demand. Um, they're going to blame it on COVID. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, think, it would have been a great movie, but I it mean, got held up by COVID. We, we could be at this point so starved for new um, content Con that we just might like it because nothing else is out there. I'm not that desperate. Sorry. Oh, but, oh, no, have no, you met I'm the good. internet though? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I'll, I'll watch some of the stuff Disney Plus has just put out there lately. So, no. Uh, cats. I watched the uh, Psych Two movie, so that was. Oh. Cat so Sadal says the movie probably won't be great, but due to people wanting it to come out, they will have a following. It was yeah, reshot. It, it's, it's it was reshot going. twice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Beacon put Fox plus X Men equals the poop emoji. Crap. <laughs> well, you know, the first movie wasn't bad the second one was okay and then it's got ridiculous with Wolverine's magic pants in the third one. <laughs> Dark um, Phoenix pretty pretty pathetic. Yeah. yeah. You do have an NBC Superstore panel with the cast. Um, I love this show, so I think that that's going to be a fun one. Um, then we've got the Boys Season 2 panel. Yeah. From Amazon. Fun show. I just it's just, You know, it's just going to be, it's cool that they're doing this, but it's just going to be, like, I've never attended a Hall H, uh, and I've been to maybe some side ones or something. But you could definitely tell, like, I know they're doing their best for it, but it's just not going to have the same impact. I mean, unless, and you can't even have, like, viewing parties. It's like anything over 10, you get arrested. So, I mean, it's it's like I want to feel that energy. Like, I like watching those videos that you put, like, last year, and everyone just goes bonkers when someone comes out. You can feel that energy going through the phone, into the uh, screen area. And, 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 you know, people are going to be excited about it, but it, well, what, we're going to watch a bunch of individual YouTube or Twitch videos of people going, oh, my God, oh, my God, because someone came out. I mean, it's just. they're uh, gonna, yeah, yeah, of course they're going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, You're right it down. So, Ken, you're going to be on the dip side. <laughs> um, um, okay. This is one of the big TV show panels. And I really, this one actually, I think, would have been on my, um, like, hey, check this out just to see the, the concept that they're working with it for one of the surprise panels. Um, but because it is one of the TV show panels, it just goes under the big list. But uh, the backlist was finishing their season, and they didn't get to finish it because of COVID. So their panel is about how they did the season finale by drawing the episode into animation. And That's cool how they went for the process of doing it and making it and stuff. And so I, I, I think that's kind of cool of instead of all these shows that just shut down a show that figured out how are we going to, we have, we need one more episode. We're going to get this episode done. Um, and we're going to figure out how to do it for the season finale. So, um, 
I mean, what you guys have any thoughts on that? I, 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 I think it's awesome how they, they, yeah. they're, they're doing that. Rather than making someone wait for two years to see it, yeah. that's such an ingenious way of doing it. And it just it makes me think that I, I mean, I want to. I haven't seen Blacklist for a couple of years, to be perfectly frank. I've seen the first couple of seasons. I've kind of fell off I, from it. But it would make me want to watch it just because I enjoy James Spader so much that I like to see him in all different aspects of of acting, which means you know get to hear voice acting. I'm I'm I think I'm a season behind. I I I can't even. What season are they in now? Six? Seven? Seven? No. Oh shoot! Yeah, I'm like that. Yeah. Two seasons behind. When was the season that this assistant dug I up all the bodies and don't was remember. that four? I don't Five? remember. Look, you got know. you got Masonic Vader taking off his headphones. So he just, <laughs> he's I'm spoilers. Like, well, I'm trying not to spoil it. That's why I'm trying to. Well, I heard taking off something. Kind of so I'm um, um, killing me, Smalls. You're killing me. I mean, so it's. I I guess I'm a couple seasons behind it, but I do really like the show. I like James Spader, but that is brilliant. You know, do do something that keeps your fandom engaged. Do yeah. something that keeps drawing you back in as opposed to just doing what other shows are doing. And it's like, well, guys, sorry, we'll see you in 20 fall, 2020, maybe fall, 2020, 2021, maybe 2022. I don't know. It's all up in the air. Jazz hands. You know, it's like, that's what we're getting right now from entertainment. And it's like, it sucks. Those are your big panels for Thursday. Um, I want to know what your guys' surprise panels are, if you found any for Thursday. I did. That I people did need to check out. Couple. I did, too. I did, too. But yeah. Super, you can go first, because ladies first. Um, well, I found one. This was just one that was intriguing to me. Um, and, and it's probably not one I would have been able to get to on a Thursday morning, maybe. Um, but there was one called Art and the Holocaust. Um, that's and, one, that's and on my was, list. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's all about children that survived the Holocaust that went on to become artists and they're drawing their their experiences and stuff through the concentration camps and especially with everything that's going on right now in the world i just thought that was really intriguing and really um relevant uh, well that's so what that, in the in the terms of the historical factor of it, it's going to have and i was talking to Beacon about this earlier and he's like bring a tissue probably for this because it's yeah. all about you know the holocaust but oh, yeah they're going to have sampling of artwork and propaganda that was done during world war ii by both the u.s and the nazis and then work done by the child survivor of the holocaust that was done after the war and they're going to have a, a survivor of the holocaust there talking about all this um with some historians and um graphic no novel artists and stuff it just it sounds like a really like I don't want to say the word cool, but in terms of the, the historical aspect of it, it's yeah. Comic-Con. Don't just come for I the, mean, com don't no just come for the comics, it. come for the history. Um, it's, it's, it's education and it's, it's teaching and it's, I think it's just cool. Yeah. So that was one. I am excited for the one too, that had Henry Winkler. Cause I didn't know he was in a new show. Um, so they it's have a new the show. Henry it's Winkler about, it's Oliver. about the, ch it's about the children's book he wrote. Yeah. So that one looked really cool too. <laughs> And then there was one too that I was pointing out to read in the chat, the how to build a girl squad. Mm -hmm. um, so how the evolution of the female has changed from, you know, like in the, in the description where they describe you as the Smurfette, you're, you're the token female in, in a group of guys and, or you're the love interest and you're this, and it's how to build this fantastic team of women from the ground up, as opposed to just casting you in the stereotypical role. I thought that looked really good too. And our chat room is demanding a blank man panel. Maybe for the 20 year, <laughs> 20 year anniversary, we'll get one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, and, and um, oh, when was the? Would you have? Would you have Masonic Vader? We'll get back to Super on. Yeah. So I, I saw there was three of them you mentioned that, or that you haven't mentioned. The one, the other one was the other. I thought big one at ten a.m. was the uh, X Men surprise party. That looked interesting. That, inch, that was yeah. That was not part of the big panels because it's not TV yeah, yeah. movies, but it looked interesting. It's it's f huge fans of X Men that are like, um, people that are Instagrammers like and that are just huge fans, and they're gonna get surprised with people from the X Men universe. So I don't know if that means cast of. I mean, come on. If you get surprised with with Hugh Jackman or Ryan Reynolds, I know Deadpool's not technically the X Men universe, but. Yeah. It's still there. Those are the two surprise. Those are the two people that are going to get the best surprise if those are the two that surprise you. Uh. They could just they could just redo that Zoom meeting they did the other day with Ryan Reynolds busted in and then Sabretooth and whatnot. That 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 would be awesome. Uh, so you have that one, and then um, there was one at one o'clock. The future of entertainment. 
I'd be I interested in checking it out just, just because of what's happening and everything going on because, you know, everything's up in the air. And then the last one uh, is at 3 o'clock. I think at the same time the boys is only because this is I, – I, I do believe that this is one of the best trilogies ever made. Mm-hmm. I, I had love some the, of this uh, as well. <laughs> the, the science of Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. I would like to see that and just see all the stuff that's uh, – uh, that that Back to the Future is actually created or at least uh, thrown out there that we do now. One point so. twenty one gigawatts. Yes. Of so, electricity. Um, so the future of entertainment is everybody talking about how they're advancing entertainment for the the after COVID world and the next stuff in terms of esports and virtual production. Um, and they have people from the Futurist and Paramount Pictures production designer for the mass singers on this, um, a professor, community organizer, and author and motivational speakers on it. Uh, a two time LinkedIn top voice in tech is on this. So it's, it's a, it's a really tech focused panel. So, um, yeah. And then the, the science of back to the future is literally that, like what all the, all the gadgets they came up with for back to the future, how much is scientifically possible versus what of course, isn't but um yeah i couldn't lift out my flux capacitor i don't know <laughs> did you which have I a... don't, which i don't know if you guys have ever done this but if you've seen this before i'm sure you have but i think it's uh which car it's one of the auto Kragen or something like that if you go to their website and type in a certain product number they actually have the flux capacitor in there and it's out of stock you have to Google i know that. i know yeah that's like that it's, is uh... so awesome it's uh, O'Reilly Auto Parts. I believe. O'Reilly, is it O'Reilly yeah. Auto Parts? Yeah, O'Reilly. you put the little product number in it. It says flux capacitor, not in stock. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> so, um, And there's now an argument of whether Deadpool is in the X-Men universe or not because the cameo was made. So for the for the movie, he's in the X. He's in it. Yes, I know. He's I in know. it. He's just on the outskirts. He, he's like he's like a. a He's hanging with the people that aren't cool enough to be in the real X Men movies. He's, he's <laughs> kind of. He's gonna. He's gonna. I love Colossus. I'm teasing. Okay, <laughs> teasing. Kind of like a Marvel ahead, prostitute. The Sonic, point, sorry. You know? Did no, you have sorry, any? He's like a Marvel you, did, prostitute. He's gonna be in every film pretty soon. <laughs> did you have any uh, Thursday surprise panels? Uh, New you ready? Well, I just want to know know why nobody's talking about the 23rd annual Comic Con superhero kung fu extravaganza. <laughs> it was on my list. <laughs> Thank it's you. on the bottom of my list. It's talking um, about the greatest fights of the year, I think, and showing them. And if you haven't seen the first twenty-two, then the twenty-third is going to be amazing. I think is what the is what the explanation was. On it. I'm only a blue belt. I'm not qualified yet. I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the twenty-year reunion of uh, Kung Fu Hustle. When is that going to happen? I don't remember when that came out. Maybe H G H Grok Grok can tell me. Um, because her and her husband cosplayed as as uh, the the couple from Kung Fu Hustle one Halloween, and it was epic. What was the Kung Fu movie with the cow? <laughs> I don't even. When's know. the twentieth for that one? I can't remember that movie. Remember? Wasn't it? It was, it was, it was it Kung was... Pao. Kung Pao. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. When he gets to the Kung Fu fight with a cow at the end, he gets knocked out with the udder or something. That's great. Um, When's the twentieth for that one? Oh. <laughs> what else? What else did you have on there? Uh, that, 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 you guys mentioned mine. You said you had a third one to talk about. I do. I have one more, and the only reason I'm bringing it up is because there's a lot of people in the chat that read this, and there's one particular person in the chat, Red Me Paw, Red Me Paw, Red Me Paw, Red Me Paw, that needs to read this, and I've told her what book to start with, and she just won't do it. She's a huge James Marsters fan. It's the 20 year anniversary of the Harry Dresden series. Um, and so they're going to have Jim Butcher and, and his editor, and I'm hoping a surprise appearance from James Marsters, who, who reads the audiobooks for that series. Um, they're doing a panel on Thursday at, I think, 4 p.m., 4 or 5 p.m., um, and I'm excited for that because I'm a huge fan of Harry Dresden. And, and if you're a James Marsters fan at all, he does phenomenal reading the audiobooks, so check um. it out. But yeah, they're asking for a uh, uh, an anniversary for Gone in sixty seconds because you know Nick Cage. So Nick Cage, got it. In. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to Friday. Uh, Charlie's Theron starts out the day. What? Charlie's Theron. 
That's what starts off Friday. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I just got done watching the old garden. Good God, man. I don't know how old she is, but she looks like she's was meet J- young uh, Joe Young. She is phenomenal on the eyes. And she kicks ass really well. That's what the name of the panel is, Evolution of a Badass. I mean, she was part of the Women Who Kick Ass panel a couple of years ago. Where it was just her because she was too big to have. Like, you couldn't have other people on the panel with Charlize because she's, she's enough. And it was a great panel. So, um, kind of, I think this one will be, will be fun. Uh, HBO Max comes with their cartoons, the Cartoon Network Studios Collection, as well as a new Adventure Time movie. You're shaking your head there, Nudie? Yeah, I enjoy Adventure Time. <laughs> Man. Podcasts don't make well for head shakes. You should talk. <laughs> Not everybody's watching this live. Um, Friday's also known as the Walking Dead Day. So you're getting all the Walking Dead panels. Fear the Walking Dead. The Walking Dead. And the new spinoff series um, for the Walking Dead. Uh, I'll be interested in those. Uh, you've also got... So let's talk about some of these didn't know about. Collider. Quibbies don't... Um, Don't Look Deeper panel, which has um, Don Cheadle and Emily Mortimer on this um, discussing uh, it's a sci-fi thriller for Quibi. Quibi's come out with the Princess Bride remake from home edition, which has been fantastic. And now they have this series with Don Cheadle and uh, Emily Mortimer. So any interest in that at all or which one was it? Uh, it's called Don't Look Deeper. It's a sci-fi thriller starring Don Cheadle and Emily Mortimer, which they'll be at the, on the panel. And it's for Is he wearing his Iron Patriot stuff? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, what else do we have for... <sighs> we got first look at Hulu's Hellstorm, which is based off of a, off of a graphic novel. You've got the Peacock original series, The Capture. Uh, The basis of the show, with the emergence of video surveillance and facial recognition, The Capture unveils a troubling world of fake news and the extraordinary power of intelligence services. To celebrate the premiere, the cast and creators will come together to discuss what could happen when seeing is deceiving and technological capabilities are abused. You gotta be careful whenever you put fake news written into something. Oh yeah, it already sounds like it's too much for me, all right. Even even, even watching Bomkey. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you may not have aged well as Charlize, man. Mm. I'll go back and watch the old guard again. <laughs> Friday gives us the Bob's Burger panel. Oh, wrong cartoon. Sorry. Yes, no, maybe so. I, you know what? I, I never got into Bob's Burgers. It's fantastic. I, I get Everyone likes it, but I just never got into it. But here's the thing: even if you don't like the show or you haven't watched the show, the panels are fun. They're really and it's a great it's a great cast for for talking on there. And I mean, because um, you've also got Archer on Friday, so you got the okay. Voice now that of, I'll lie, yeah. Well, but Archer. you've got the voice of Bob and the voice of Archer, you know, on the same panel because he voices Whatever, both still, of them. It's so. Archer. I mean, Archer's anything good. Aisha Tyler's on is hilarious in my opinion. So <laughs> um, she has no shame. No shame. No. All right. So I got to get thoughts on this series. From the producers of Robot Chicken, whose original Crossing Swords centers on good-hearted hero wannabe Patrick, who lands his dream job as a squire only to learn the royal castle is a corrupt hornet's nest of horny monarchs, crooks and charlatans, war, murder, full frontal nudity. Who knew brightly colored peg people led such exciting lives? Uh, It's moderated by award-winning film critic Scott Manns, who's the the Crossing Swords creator John Harvatine IV, Tom Root, and they're joined by cast members Adam Ray, Tara Strong, Seth Green, Alana Eubach, Adam Paley, and Yvette Nicole Brown. And yes, I said Crossing Swords. <laughs> you had me at full frontal nudity. <laughs> Stick feel for full frontal nudity, nonetheless. Mm-hmm. It, it reminds me of those days when you're in school and you have nothing else going on, so you start drawing stick figures and you decide, oh, what if I put an extra stick there? Hmm. Or maybe some maybe a broken stick here, some curved stick there, you know, you know, back to those days. <laughs> Any surprise panels for Friday people? You know what? I saw one that I wanted to go see and it's undiscovered art of Jack Kirby. Okay. I'd love to see that. Uh, everyone knows Jack Kirby's work and everything. So I like, I like looking at stuff uh, or his artwork, the stuff that we haven't seen yet. Cause it really allows you to see the, the depth of his, uh, 
his artistic ability and possibly even looking to see other kind of characters he might have been hopefully thinking about making uh, making at one point or another. Uh, Ruru 2 says, I think I'm assuming on Crossing Swords, I hope they spend some money on character design. Um, <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah, so. Yeah, the Jack Kirby thing, I, I mean, he is he is royalty for comic books and Comic-Con, so I think that looks interesting. Um, what about you, Nudie? Did you have anything for Friday? Yeah, um, the psychology of Star Trek versus Star Wars. Really? You went to, damn it. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> what, what, what's that panel about? <laughs> okay, so the description says, uh, back by popular demand, the Trek versus Wars discussion returns to Comic-Con in Episode 6, with examinations of Discovery, Picard, and, of course, Rise of Skywalker. Designed to engage the audience in a healthy but fun debate, this panel explores meaningful topics of psychology prominent in Star Trek and Star Wars. Who's more emotionally intelligent, Picard or Luke? Come on, really? Is that even a question? How do hero characters, Ray and Burnham, show us healthy coping and self-care? And what's the importance of legacy when it comes to saving the universe? So, join uh, pop culture psychologist Dr. Drea Letamendi and Dr. Ali Matu as they enlist the persuasive viewpoints of special guests Todd Stashwick and Jennifer Murrow, martyred by Brian Ward. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. One, Star, Star Wars, I'm a fan of Star Wars. I love Star Wars. I love Star Trek too, but I'm a fan of Star Wars. Star Wars has no hope against uh, Picard and Discovery in talking about psychology. They're gonna, it's just no. going to lose, unfortunately. No, it's got to be Picard versus Yoda. Oh. <laughs> then you got yourself a battle. Yeah. All so, right, there you got yourself a battle. Two, uh, Rui 2 said Star Trek beats Star Wars. Squareboy Nemo asks, why does Mike, Mike's microphone sound like it's behind him? HD Z Grok mm. said, did he say butt fun? <laughs> Which apparently you did because somebody else wrote that as well. <laughs> you can never have enough butt fun. That, that is another podcast later on. That's after, I think that's after midnight though, you know, so certain hours. <laughs> That's what Beacon said. It was in the description. It's going to be butt fun. So... <laughs> That's in Hall Double. That's in Hall Triple X. They never knew there was going to be a podcast where we actually read this aloud. They they were tricking us. Um, <laughs> couple of the. Did you have any surprise panels? Uh, super. Yeah, there was there was one that hearkened to what I was talking about in the pre chat was which is read manga and learn classics literature. So are you one of those kids that are struggling to read a thousand page book? They're going to bring you some manga that will teach you some of the things that classic literature does, but in a way that's engaging and fun. I mean, I love to read, don't get me wrong, but there has never been a slog in my life. My Everest of books was the unabridged copy of Les Miserables, a story that I love and a story that can relate on, on many levels to many people. But I will always tell people, don't ever read that book because it's like 1600 pages of condensed writing. And it took me like eight months to read. Even my English teacher gave up on that book halfway through the series and i finished it out of sheer stubbornness but if you ever want to turn someone off reading just give them that book to read and yet you will never read another thing in your life because it's such a slog to get through um and and uh, you know i think victor hugo is a great writer but this is again you know kids don't have especially today in the world of technology they don't have that laser focus most of the time on books to be able to read through some of this classic literature, so you need to make it engaging, and this is a way to make it engaging. Let's um, be perfectly frank. I don't think kids have really read a book since the 1800s, all right? <laughs> There's this whole thing called technology yeah. that kind of screwed that up. So Yeah, well, read, at least read the abridged version, the one that's like 400 pages, because that is at least easy for to get through. But that's yeah, As long as it's got three eight. words and a picture on it, I'm good. In our chat room... Um, Scroll boy talking about uh, Star Wars versus Star Trek. Nah, man. Palpatine versus Picard. Palpatine legit manipulated a whole universe and part of a multiverse to his whim. He knows psychology. Um, yeah. Actually, yeah. Okay. Uh, Ruru 2, I can't read books, but he loves re reading man manga. 
And Cannon Fodder, I haven't read a book in a long time. Squirrelboy said, hey, 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 I just bought Dune on Google Play Playbooks. I'm using technology <laughs> yeah, to read go. a book. That so, works. Um, some of the surprises that I had found. Um, so you've got zombies and the coronavirus planning for the next big out outbreak, including how like to plan that. for zombies. So mm -hmm. with, with writers of World War Z and stuff. So <laughs> I thought that seemed uh, pretty interesting. Um we had what was the other ones I had on here? Da, 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 da. Well, then to the to the really surprise, the one that needs to be checked out every single year, and they're doing one this year for at home, uh, the Klingon Lifestyles, the Home Alone uh, year. Um, Klingon Lifestyles is going to be Sharknet 06. No, no, no. Klingon Lifestyles is actually where they have people. I think I think they dress up like Klingons, and yeah. they do like a, a play of. Klingons living at home, just just average day lifestyle, and this time it's now they have to deal with having to be quarantined at home and have a whole play built up for this. So it's definitely something worth checking out. <laughs> you have to. I do remember. I do remember my dad. So so one of the things he did do for me, uh, he, him and my mom are huge. Uh, at least he was a huge Star Trek fan. I think his, my mom probably got drugged into it, but they had Klingon outfits and everything. One of the things he was able to do for me one year is he. Uh, <laughs> He got me. He got me in the Comic Con for my, uh, you know, right after college and everything. And he was wearing his outfit and stuff. Um, yeah, he was into that stuff. I think he actually did something one year with that and everything. So, in fact, I'm sure I, he's still got the. I'm sure my mom still got that Star Trek outfit. I'll have to find it. I have to wear it sometime for you guys. That was Friday. So Friday. now we're going into Saturday. Um, you got the well. First, you've got Cosmos. I, I figured. It's still TV, so I thought you guys would think it's it's a pretty big panel. You've got uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson on it with Seth MacFarlane to talk about the next season of Cosmos. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Simpsons? No, that's that's on the list. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Simpsons. Definitely. Now, here's the weird thing. I recognize no name that is on that Simpsons panel. It's like none of the cast, which made it very odd. Um, it is. I'll read this off if you didn't look at it. They'll never stop the Simpsons from appearing at Comic-Con. This time on Zoom, join Al Jean, Matt Selman, David Silverman, Carolyn Ullman, Mike B. Anderson, and moderator Yearly Smith. Find out how the show has sur surmounted social well, distancing. Well, Yearly and Smith is least, that's, uh, that's Lisa, Lisa Simpsons. Simpsons. Is that, voice. okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Al Jean and David Silverman are definitely well recognized names. Who are they? Producers, like, this, behind okay. the scenes. Okay, so they're, because I, I just, I, I think of, like, the the uh, the the voice of homer and and like uh the matt graining and i don't see him on there and so i'm just like okay that's i just okay so you're lee smith okay that makes sense um yeah find out how the show has surmounted social distancing and turbulent times and route to season 32 i turned 40 that's the show's only eight years younger than me <laughs> this is <laughs> wow Okay. It's crazy shit, man. Crazy shit. All right. Bless the Hearts is another Fox show that's a uh, cartoon. You've got Kristen Wiig, Maya Rudolph, Ike Barinholtz, Jillian Bell, Fortune Fe Feimster, uh, executive producers Phil Lord, Chris Miller, and Andy Bobrow. So pretty talented panel of people, to be honest. I haven't watched the cartoon, so I don't know if you guys have checked it out or not. That sounds like a no. Okay. What do you guys think about Constantine? 15th anniversary with Keanu. What's what fifty that or what? Constantine fifteenth anniversary with oh, Keanu. Oh, you said fiftieth for a second. I was like, 15. holy shit, it's not fifty. No, with the director I mean, Francis Lawrence and uh, maybe part two now. <laughs> Any interest in in Constantine? Hell yes, years? Well. Yeah. <laughs> you you hoping kidding me? You're hoping they're going to confirm that they're going to make another. They're bringing him oh, back. Yeah, to... Yeah, dude, that's a, that is definitely an underrated movie, man. Like you, people need to watch that movie again because that that was a good movie. There was a good cast. Uh, I thought they did good with uh, uh, Constantine's character as a whole. Uh, they didn't go too far off on stuff. I think uh, Keanu Reeves played the part well. So I mean. Why, I, I'm still upset that they haven't made a part two, and I'm hoping they do announce. And that's it. what HJZ Grok asked: Isn't Constantine two coming? So right now, it's a rumor that Keanu is going to return to reprise the role of Constantine, but it's literally just a rumor. There's no confirmation, yay or nay. I, I, I've seen it on both sides. Um, 
because the rumor mill says that they know people they're they're inside sources that it's coming and then i've seen people that are inside sources that are like that's just a, that's not that's not going to happen it's not happening right now so um so we don't know um <laughs> HJZ Grox says Shia LaBeouf needs to make his big comeback in Constantine too. Hopefully not as Constantine though. Yeah, I mean I don't think he has enough <laughs> I don't think he have enough skin for tattoos, right? I think he's used that all up for his last movie. Actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. It's perfect. It's yeah. Yeah. He said eat himself to death. <laughs> um Yeah, okay. And Rachel Weiss was in Constantine, which yeah. Yep. I like Rachel mm-hmm. Weiss. All right. Yep. Um mm. Then you have uh, the Phineas and Ferb, the movie Candace yes. Against the Universe, new Disney Plus Phineas and Ferb film. That was my pick that Saturday. What was, what was that super? <laughs> I said someone was talking about Shia LaBeouf. Oh. In the, in the chat. <laughs> and he Butt-Farm. makes his comeback in the Peanut Butter Falcon. <laughs> All right. Um, American Dad gets a panel. Then, uh, int- okay, let's talk about remakes. Disney Plus. Blast off with Disney Plus is the right stuff. No. So I, I, <laughs> I put that on my list to check out. And the only uh, reason yeah. why I did is because you, when you read the description of it, they're not remaking it. They're they're going back a little bit further in time and how and talking about everybody i think is what i read about it that's how it seems in the description so i'm gonna read this description from leonardo dicaprio's appian way and warner horizon scripted television the right stuff is the first scripted disney plus original series from national geographic the series takes a clear-eyed look at the early days of the u.s space program the series follows seven of the military's best pilots become astronauts for the newly formed nasa at the height of the cold war competing to be the first in space these ordinary men achieve the extraordinary, inspiring America to turn towards a new horizon of ambition and hope. This 45-minute panel moderated by former NASA astronaut Dr. May Jemison, you will hear from the cast and crew about making this compelling and cinematically extraordinary series, plus an exclusive first look will be revealed. But then you scroll down to the panelists, and you've got Patrick J. Adams as Major John Glenn, Jake McDormand as Lieutenant Commander Alan Shepard, Colin O'Donohue as Captain Garden Cooper, Michael... So they are remaking the right stuff, but National Geographic is part of it, so it's probably going to be a little bit more historically accurate. I'm hoping. I love the movie, The Right Stuff, well, but they're they're doing well, this well, in two once, series. Well, so so when I look at it, I look it's a series first of all, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm interested in watching it. I love all these different types of documentaries. In fact, From the Earth to the Moon is still one of my favorite uh, documentaries on uh, space travel and NASA in general. However. I'm interested in seeing this because the one thing about the right stuff is it was a movie and it it bounced between the Mercury astronauts and everything and, and uh, Chuck Yeager back and forth and back Mm -hmm. and forth. And they didn't, and they had two hours to tell a story. I'm sure there was probably a lot more done, but they only had so much time. I think it's gonna be a lot more interesting to see this now because now they're going to be able to possibly pull off uh, from the earth. And I don't know if you guys have seen that, but that was an HBO series uh, on the Apollo missions uh, that uh, that happened after Apollo 13, and uh, Tom Hanks actually helped produce it and, and narrated it. But I'm think I'm hoping they try to do the same thing with the right stuff that they did with uh, with with from the Earth to the Moon, because they'll be able to individualize each person, uh, be able to tell their story a little bit more in detail, not have it so intertwined. Show everything about the Mercury program. I, I'm really hoping that's what they're going to reach for in that. Yeah, let me see. Because you got John Glenn, Alan Shepard. Do they ha- even have Chuck Yeager in this casting? That, uh... No, they're just going to focus on just the, the the guys that became astronauts because they're not. There's no Yeager even in the class. Well, cast that, which, which is fine. Yeah, for that, the panel, was, at least for the panel, they might. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, so. I mean that's one of the things. The right stuff is a phenomenal movie, but oh, they're trying the movie. to condense. They're trying to condense so much history and so much, like that's everything that happened during that time was so so amazing and so groundbreaking but they can only do it in two hours so i'm really hoping that disney plus could be able to do 10 episodes really kind of pick it apart really show things about it, show things that we don't know about yet that's what i'm really hoping to get out of it it's not oh. a remake it's more 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 like a more detailed telling i guess <laughs> Picon says dude the movie was long <laughs> i like the movie though it's a good movie um 
And no, I agree. I agree with you on that. It is a it is a remake though, just in a series form. Um, it's Disney doing what Disney does. But I I I agree. I I'm excited for it. So I, I it was on my list. So um, yeah, um, we have what else do we got going on here? Uh, and I like Disney. Another. I like what Disney There's Plus a- has done so far. So. Um, so far, no. I, yeah. I have to. You got a Guillermo del Toro and Scott Cooper on Antlers, new new movie that they're working on. Um, I just want to know how many times Guillermo, Guillermo always has to hold his Fs. They they, they make a, a joke about how many times he says the F word um, yeah. and bets on it at uh, on Hall H. So I'm wondering if he's gonna if he's gonna be able to hold it because they're gonna be live streaming on YouTube or if he's gonna. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, it doesn't sound like anything we haven't heard before. I mean, I'm intrigued by the movie that they're working on with Antlers, and I like the Wendigo arc and and the history of that. But it, I don't know. It just sounds like a basic panel to me. We we've heard about the history of filmmaking. We know what goes into it. I don't think they're gonna bring anything new to the table. Um, you do get an interesting Apple TV series, uh, uh, For All Mankind, with Joel Kinnaman, Michael Dorman, Sarah Jones, Chantel Van Santine, Jody Balfour, Ren Schmidt, Sonia Walger, and Chris Marshall um, to talk about the first season. Apple brought some decent talent to their TV series, so this is this along with that, so maybe this will get you invested in trying to honestly, get Apple. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I speak for everyone else, but honestly, dude, I'm done with streaming channels. <laughs> Apple came in too late. They're, they're, I, get it. I mean, seriously, that's what I think it is. Well, like, no... someone's, someone's going to replace DC Universe eventually because that that they're just moving all their shows over to every everybody else. So, gonna... which I still There's... can't get. By the way, Doom Patrol is supposed to be available on HBO Max. It's it is. not there. Yes, it is. I just no, it I is just on there. watched it today. It's on I there. cannot get it. it. It must not be. It's on, on there. The I see it all the time. Okay, it's... D O O M. I I will show you. I will send you screenshots when I go into Hulu and go to my HBO Max add-on, which is where I have it because you can't get it on a regular Roku. Um, you you um I I don't have it. It's not there, and it pisses me off to no end. Yeah, I just binged all six episodes over last night and this morning. All the new ones just came out on the PlayStation. Oh, app of hbo max it's there so uh-huh. i don't know yeah, uh you get a family guy panel but then you get the big panel of saturday bill and ted face the music with the cast yeah <laughs> damn straight <laughs> you could at least play guitar or something man you didn't have to just cuss bill and ted don't <laughs> bill and ted don't cuss <laughs> bill and ted don't cuss they're good boys no, um, they say dickweed but they don't say <laughs> the f word <laughs> Shit me! I just saw that movie. <laughs> they don't say the F word though. <laughs> not... uh, hey, this is this is new millennium. This is COVID world. Everything you've said it twice. Now. You wouldn't have been a Bill and Ted movie. You would have been rated R after the first one. You get one one F word. One. That's all you get. I'm a John Wick movie now. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um. Uh, You're fast going right past John Wick to snakes on a plane, man. Uh, HJZ Grok just let me know that 2,000 people RSVP'd to watch the Bill and Ted uh, face the music panel. So, um, yeah. Demon's High Football Rules! I didn't go to San Dimas. Neither did I, but I saw it in the movie once. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um... Oh. Good Lord. What was this one? So you've got, uh, speaking of novels, Super, you ever read yeah. Brave New World? Groundbreaking uh, novel? I've heard of it. I haven't read it yet. Well, Peacock's got an original series based off of it. Okay, you know bringing. what? The Peacock Network can can suck a body part, all right? <laughs> I am furious. Just remove the pain. an elbow. Peacock, all right? <laughs> you... you you want to be the biggest jerk in the world. And I'm not saying that Roku and Amazon Prime, they're, they're being a little bit of a jerk too. It, it's, it's the same thing that happened with Sony and, and Marvel versus Spider-Man. You've got Peacock that wants to own all the ad rights and blah, 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 blah. And they're not willing to play ball with Roku and Amazon. You're willing to lose out on 50 million subscribers to your freaking network all because Roku and Amazon want a little bit more of the ad rights than you're willing to give up. You can eat it, eat it. 
I'm not going to watch anything on your damn network right. after I, I watch the psych movie. So I watched it on my computer because literally <laughs> after I you gave you some money, I'm never giving you any more. <laughs> no, I'm never giving you any more money. I, I don't even know if I gave them money by, by watching the network because it's free with the Xfinity login. So I have Xfinity and I use my login to watch it. After that, though, no, you can you can suck it. What? As far as psych is concerned, you know, what? It, how do they say it? Suck it. Step <laughs> off. Step off. Wait a minute. I didn't even word. notice this. Uh, HJC Grok brought it out. Kevin yeah. Smith is the moderator for the Bill and Ted panel. Oh, that's so cool. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you've x-rated us now. That. We're NC-17. Oh. <laughs> I'll rock that more than I'll ever rock that damn Peacock Network. You can... No, just there goes our Twitch so, so, so Super's never gonna rock the peacock, <laughs> and uh, Nudie Rudy's gonna have butt fun. Uh, <laughs> so much butt fun. <laughs> yeah, those high notes that I hit—that's the closest I'm gonna get to karaoke the rest of 2020. All right, let me. Okay, oh, so I did that laugh. Sorry. This is so they had their last panel last year, um, and because the show was done, this is the last season. But Age of Shield is coming back this season. But they're making, or not this season, but this this year at Comic Con. But they're making it pretty interesting. Um, the Fleet Science Center celebrates Agents of Shield. So for the final season, they are going to have actual scientists and the people that play scientists in agents of shield discuss the re the realism of science versus non-realism of science that's inside the agents of shield series i'm gonna watch it i think it's awesome for anyone who doesn't live in san diego the flight the fleet science is ruben h fleet science theater it's the it's the science museum that every kid around here gets to go to at least once in their school life because it's a field trip. Freaking awesome, man. That's so cool that they're doing something like that uh, for the final season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I, I'm down with it. Yeah, they're just going to discuss with the San Diego scientists if they got the science right on the stuff that they... I, I thought, Once again, I like people. I like the, the, the panels where they're taking an inventive way of, hey, this COVID thing happened, let's, let's switch it on its heels for the type of panel that we do. Um and it is a TV panel, so it falls into the big panels. Um, cartoon Voices is always a fun one. It's not a big one. But the only reason I have it on here is that the cartoon voices that are on it are going to be reading a uh, specialized version of uh, Red Riding Hood, I think, in their cartoon voices. So um, mm -hmm. HBO's Lovecraft County uh, Country. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Mm, Lovecraft Country. Uh, so that looks good. Tell, tell me a little about it. Um, it's a cool show, basically, looking at kind of... Uh different aspects of, of Lovecraft horror like it's it's got uh, a lot of the uh, the vibe of like out and uh, 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 get out sorry and the goodness gracious uh, the Jordan Peele stuff like where it's it's a lot of kind of racial tension mixed in with the horror and showing how you know uh, just that particular area of the country could be very inhospitable to African Americans as well as the layers of the Lovecraftian horror and everything. And it sounds like a really cool juxtaposition of, of a way to kind of, uh, you know, because Lovecraft himself was a bit racist on his own. And to, to bring that aspect uh, a little into the, the, the horror, I think is a cool angle to look at. So I'll Did you just say, goodness gracious? There's <laughs> <laughs> wrong nothing with wrong with goodness gracious. It's better than it's better than butt fun. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they go together. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't think that's what you're. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Okay. No, I, uh, I could turn it down a road. I'm gonna pull back and go that way. You've got the stars and producers of ABC Stumptown, which I still haven't watched, but I really wanted to check it out. It looked like a fun show. Um, when an Earp comes back to sci-fi, what we do in the shadows, the TV series, and it's moderated by, uh, um, oh God, Haley Joel Osment is, is moderating it. I don't know why. I don't know if he it's joined like the show. It's like his career. He sees dead people. <laughs> Dude's just coming out of nowhere, man. Uh, he was on The Boys, season one. Um, AMC's Nosferatu, still haven't watched it. It's going to have the cast there. 
Uh, you get your evening with Kevin Smith that he does every year at, for Comic Con. Farscape. Yep. Um, actually, that was my list of things. That's pretty much the big stuff for Saturday. What did you guys have any surprise panels? There was a couple of them that you didn't mention for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them was Back to the Moon and Beyond with NASA. It's on my list. I'd like to see. I, I think that's kind of cool that this. I mean, NASA seriously, they're they're coming. They're trying to save us from COVID, man. They're doing everything they can possibly to get our minds off COVID, and now they're going to be at Comic Con. Well, the best part about remember. that as well, I, I love it. Yeah, it's talking about going back to the moon and, and all that. But did you see who's hosting the panel? I did not. Who is it? It's William Shatner. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. You're going to be bleeping a lot out, but I'm going to be watching it. So tell me, how are we going to get back to the moon? Yeah, so it's them talking oh. about putting pe- people back on the surface of the moon in 2024 for the, for the Artemis program. Um, yep. It's going to be hosted by William Shatner. It'll have the NASA astronauts Nicole Mann and Kajel Lindgren, as well as space technology expert Lenitra Tate and Lindsay Atkinson. At- 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 so, um, yeah, I th- that's on my list. I thought it was a really cool. Definitely need to check it out. The other um, one was DC at Home. Okay. Just to check look that in. out. See what's going on, yeah. On, yeah. on the comic creators there. Um, exactly, yeah. And then, what about uh, Nudie? Did you have anything? Uh, there was a fun one that looked pretty interesting called uh, Unnecessary Debates. On my list. That interesting, yeah. Yeah, literally yeah, just... going on right just now. Li- yeah, literally, the debates that uh, you never thought needed to happen, but somebody's going to do it, and it's going to be comedians doing it, so... Um... Who wore it better, Gollum or Tarzan? That's a good one. <laughs> pretty much anything on Facebook right now. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Super? Do you have anything? I saw two on there that look kind of interesting. Um, one of them, as much as I really don't want a prequel to The Hunger Games, because I really don't give a rat's ass about President Snow's backstory, the idea of, of the panel surviving The Hunger Games are the odds in your favor w- with some of the people that they've got on it, um, where wealthy people you know, the wealthier pitting children of the working class against each other, you know, and, and trying to survive, especially relating it to today's world of, of the middle class going up against the wealthy um, was a little bit more intriguing in that regard. I just, I don't care about President Snow's background. I really don't. The guy's a douchebag. Nobody cares how he ended up to be the douchebag that he was. So that series, in my opinion, can eat it. Um, but that looked interesting because I do love the Hunger Games world and I, I loved all of it from start to finish. And God damn it, Katniss! Well, she heard you. She heard you. She heard you talking about Hunger Games, and that cat's name is Katniss. <laughs> what did you expect to happen? Um, I didn't even know you had two cats. What's the the chat, is the chat she room. Came a run in. The chat room um, is talking Katniss about was, good gracious, um, and that uh, <laughs> that Nudie Rudy is the, the 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 most tamed talking one, and that that's that's a problem. Um, they're also trying. They're also trying to figure out what Picard's uh, safe word is. If it's make it so Earl Grey, um, engage, yeah, um, <laughs> entanglement. For for something that harkens back to, to my teenage years and watching it with my nieces and nephews, the the twenty twenty Sailor Moon and the power of friendship um, uh, was a that was cat a is not interested in being on TV. By the way, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have one of those in a second. Your, your cat made everybody run away. We dropped down to six viewers. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to touch on the one surprise one I had. Ultra Lawyer Kaju Patrol. Um, it's lawyers talking about what would be covered and wouldn't be covered if Godzilla or some Kaju mm-hmm. attack happened. <laughs> I, love, I love this. So I mean, Act of God's not covered, but not the Act of Godzilla. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> my kid was looking at the list and he saw that he's like oh dad there's a kaiju po- uh, thing I, I looked at it I was like dude you're not going to want to watch that it's like oh, oh, oh it's a kaiju seriously we're going to see Godzilla we're going to see Mecha Godzilla we're going to see this I said no 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 you're not going to want to watch it seriously dad it's kaiju that's kaiju I said Sito it's about people sitting in a room talking about what's going to happen if Godzilla shows up what are we covered for so is my ha- if my Playstation gets smashed by kaiju smashing it do I get it back 
<laughs> he's like, oh, that doesn't sound like fun. I was like, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Does my fire coverage cover nuclear fire from Godzilla's mouth? Uh, HJZ Grox is also for the Kaiju one. Uh, so, Red, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you coming in. I know it's I know it's late for you, but we do appreciate you coming and joining us for the podcast, and hope it's that you enjoy right. Comic Con next week. Um, so, it's Friday night, COVID. There is nothing going on. <laughs> if you're not watching this, you're sleeping. All you're right. playing your PlayStation. We got one day left. It starts Online. with. Cool. It starts with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle film 30th anniversary. Yeah. That's what we want to have marked off. Isn't that the only thing they have on Friday or Sunday? <laughs> no, they actually have a good one. Girls in a half show. First, you've got Hoops, which is a new uh, new Fox cartoon that's got Jake Johnson, Rob Riggle, and Ron Funches, Natasha Leggero, Cleo King, and A.D. Miles. Um, I mean, you got Rob Riggle and Ron Funches on a show, on a panel. I think probably going to be fun. pretty fun. Yeah. You've got the Goldbergs panel with the cast. That's sure. They're still around? Yeah. <laughs> Show's great. Sure. I knew that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I didn't think they were canceled two years ago. And then, because <laughs> it is Supernatural, and Sunday was Supernatural Day, even though they, they weren't going to be back this year, they have the Supernatural Therapy, fighting eternal monsters like a hunter in real life. Um, and it's with the same type of thing where I like that they're kind of mixing up this whole new way of doing things. So, um, the, uh, they're going to talk to psychologists as well as members of the cast, not the two main members, but members of the cast, um, about psychology and, and, uh, the wear and tear on people and, um, you know, dealing with ordeals and issues and mental challenges. So. Um, I like that they're doing that whole little mix on it. Go ahead now, Super, because I know you got something to say about the panel. Well, yeah, because a lot of people don't realize that the money that they put forth into to combating combating, excuse me, uh, mental health issues. I mean, they with with Jared's always keep fighting the "You're Not Alone" campaign, um, the scholarships that they granted to people to to go work on crisis hotlines. I am which am one of them. Um, what was granted a scholarship to to work on a suicide hotline. Um, they they founded thousands of, of people to be trained in in crisis handling and, and whatnot. And then that's a lot of thing that flies under the radar. I mean, I know Misha has his charity and and you know he gets recognition for that, but this is the kind of stuff that flies under that radar and and people aren't aware of it. So, for them to get a panel and i like that it's not jared and jensen and misha i like that it's you know i know ruthie's on the panel um i i can't recall who else is on it is possibly kim rhodes um um but to to be able to talk about the things that they're doing it's big especially nowadays with with everything that we're going through and the wear and tear and and the you know the pandemic and all of this stuff that's beating down our psyche on a day-to-day basis with the news it's a big thing to be able to tie into pop culture and still tie it to, re- you know, relevant life. It's um, writers Derek Hughes, Henry Alberto, Rachel Miner, Ruth Connell, Lauren Tom, Andre Dre Paul, and Austin Basis. Yeah. Okay, so Lauren, not Kim. So, yeah. I, I, I love Lauren Tom. She's fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, no, and that's your Sunday. So, uh, yeah. did you guys have any surprise panels for Sunday? Uh, no, I, 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 go, ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go 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 ahead, Nudie. Uh, I had one I thought was pretty interesting. Was uh, everyone's a critic? Being a journalist in an online age sounded pretty darn interesting to me. Nice. Sounds like a cool panel. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even catch that one. Um, yeah. And that yeah, sounds... with the journalism background myself, and definitely. Uh, there's been a, a massive upheaval in journalism and print journalism, especially. It's kind of an interesting angle to see Comic Con kind of flesh that out some and what their viewpoints would be specifically. So, um, no, that sounds. I didn't see that one. I gotta check that one out. Um, what about you, uh, Masonic? No, you know, I, I I'm really excited to seeing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle one. I mean, honestly, I know you mentioned it already, but that's a. Uh, I don't know, man. For some reason, that movie. Uh, just did something to the genre itself 
that really kind of I, I think really separated. I mean, it's not the greatest movie in the world. I mean, there, you've seen better special. No, but it's set there. up. It's set up a big. Uh, yeah, exactly. I, and there would be exactly. no there'd be no ninja rap without the first turn to me. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to get to the second Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so you know, so true, so true. <laughs> and Ninja so Rap's true. a big thing, yeah. Um, go Ninja, go Ninja, go, go, go Ninja, go Ninja. <laughs> you gotta do this though. Go Ninja, go Ninja, go. Uh, super. Did you have any surprise panels for Sunday? Yeah. How did you all miss the conversation with Nathan Fillion? I did not. I oh. knew it was going to come up. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So that one. I mean, it's literally all of my favorite people from Firefly and Castle. You get Joss Whedon, Alan Tudyk, Gina Torres, Mekia Cox, Molly Quinn, Seamus Daver, and John Huertas. Fantastic. I love Nathan Fillion. I love all those people. In fact, my cousin went to high school with Seamus Daver. So I know I don't know him personally, but I have communicated with him. My cousin has communicated with him and, and stuff like that. So just that's cool and friend of a friend kind of a way. Um, I'm ex I'm really excited for that one because that's like all of my favorite things from the past 10 years in one panel. No, that's awesome. Into 15 years. Yeah, I had, that, I had that on my I list. I had that on my list. Now, here's, okay, <laughs> so exactly. So here's my two, my two surprise ones to check out for Sunday. Um, I thought Masonic Vader would have hit this one, but he didn't. His his fan of uh, space and everything. Um, the uh, no t no tow trucks beyond Mars. So um, they are talking to the JPL engineers um, about the JPL rover missions and making the rover missions and the breakdown of the rover on Mars. So. Um, and then what what they got set up for the next rover missions. I thought that would be, I thought that was really cool. So I I go lie. I probably missed that one because you know as you get older your vision kind of gets screwed <laughs> and after. And seriously, if you if you go to the app or if you look at the freaking schedule of this damn thing, I mean it's like this this this. It's like eh. so I probably I get missed it. that one. I get it. The other one I liked once again make having fun with this whole situation and figuring it out. Composer Squares Game Show. So they're taking compose. Composers from Mission Impossible, Fallout, Rick and Morty, The Boys, Call of Duty, The Witcher, and they're having them play a Hollywood Squares style game. Because, you know, you've got Zoom with all the squares, so you can make tic-tac-toe with it. They're going to get two people, and they're going to do the trivia questions to the composers and see who wins, and they're going to win a soundtrack package. Um, so I was like, okay, that's kind of cool on, on doing a little flippy flop, turn it on its head type of thing. Um, so when you said composers, I thought you were going to say John Williams would be like, all right, cool. But you know, no, <laughs> no, uh, but there's other composers besides John Williams. He's just one of the most known. Um, yeah. So that's what I had for the surprise panels. Um, yeah, that's it for the, for the schedule. The, the one little thing that I wanted to bring up real quick, if you guys want to have fun at home with all this stuff, go to comic con, comic hyphen con.org and the one of the first things that pops up is comic-con experience at home they really went all out with this you can print up every single sign that was at that's at comic-con usually and do everything up so you have a hall h sign you have front of line end of line restrooms they have the recordings for the stuff that usually plays over the loudspeaker so like when you walk into hall h uh you'll hear a recording about no, no running to your seats to uh move the farthest into the right and don't save seats for others. You can download all this stuff so you can actually have the Comic-Con experience at home. You can get your badges. There's a sign that says, please knock lightly attending Comic-Con. Um, so they really went all out with this thing and to have fun with it, but they're not the only one doing stuff. Head over to Amazon. They have their virtual con Mondo, which is a great, um, Art, artist and poster and all different types of collectibles. They're doing a virtual con. SDCC blog, which is where I get all my information for Comic-Con, is having their own convention on Saturday, virtual convention. They start out with Zachary Levi as their first guest on that. Um, lots and lots of stuff. Just look it up. Funko's having their week-long convention, talking about different Funko Pops and things like that. And then all the exclusives are coming out Wednesday, Thursday, um stuff to but buy you already bought my pots so i've already yeah i've already bought one one uh 
one little poster. So, but well, let's be perfectly frank. The thing they're missing, and you have to really appreciate this because you have to be there, are the smells of Comic Con. <laughs> like a candle of Hall H Funk. Or, 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 Hall H or doesn't like, have the funk. It's indigo. It's the smaller rooms that have the funk. You Hall got H the, is the big. Main, you got the main floor sweat, and then you've got the uh, the. The, the freaking uh, food boots on the side and stuff. Yeah. So I leave it to these guys. I'm very willing to do it. I'm springing this on them. I'm going to spring this on everybody else that's part of the Malice Cast All Things Nerd podcast um, and the group. I am perfectly fine because we're going to be watching these panels throughout the week of opening up a streaming, uh, a live stream here on the Twitch channel so that if anybody wants to watch a panel and wants to come join in with us as we talk about what we're watching, reacting and stuff, um, I'm willing to open it up all week long from Wednesday to Sunday. So if they're willing to come along too, um, we may have a stream going for the entire Comic-Con that you can come and it, react with us to the panels that are going on as well. So um, we, so we get our I'll video of us there. reacting. Yeah. I'll definitely be able to win. <laughs> so if you guys want to come aboard or you guys want to come along, please come join us. Um, you'll see stuff go live whenever it is. It's just going to probably just be on all the time, and, and we'll just rotate out as it goes along, whoever's able to be on and what they're watching and what they're reacting to if you want to be a part of it as well. So please, please come back. Twitch.tv forward slash MaliceCorp. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. Um, let's talk about where you can follow everybody here outside of the cast. Uh, Super, where can people follow you outside the cast? You can follow me on Twitter at Superhuvian Nut. You can follow me on Instagram at Superhuvian Freak. Uh, uh, Nudie Rudy, where can people follow you? I know. <laughs> uh, you can follow me at Nudie Rudy on Instagram, Nudie Rudy on Twitter. And uh, yeah, uh, look forward to seeing all you guys around uh, Comic Con. And whichever one, whichever way you spell it, will be a surprise if you find the right duty, Rudy. Because one's spelled one way, and the other one's spelled another. R U D I E R U D Y. Wow. Um, wow. No, seriously, his his Twitter is spelled one way, and his Instagram is spelled a different way. <laughs> Just, oh, okay. I thought there was another person with a similar name. No, like, no, no, no. no. Which wouldn't you know, surprise I'm... me. There might be. Um, Masonic. Where can people follow you? Uh, you can follow me uh, Masonic Vader seventy one on the PlayStation Network and Masonic Vader on <clears> Twitter, <throat> and soon to be announced another page soon enough. Awesome! Uh, you can follow this whole entire thing on Twitter at All Nerd Podcast, um, or you can follow us at Malice Corp Malice Corp dot com, and uh, come come check us out. Come check out previous shows. We are available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. Also on YouTube, and come uh, have some fun with us on twitch.tv forward slash MaliceCorp. If you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter at Mest underscore MaliceCorp, or on Instagram at Mest5150, and uh, appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. We will see you next week, throughout the week probably, for different streams. You keep nerding on. Bye-bye. Stay nerdy.